Hello, welcome again to another edition of Prove All Things. I want to thank everybody who's joining us out there, whether if you're watching on our television apps on your Roku or Apple TV, or watching on your phone or tablet with the CGI Digital Network app, or on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, wherever. We get, we're we all over the place. So we're, we're glad for you to join us, and we uh, appreciate any comments you have today if you're watching live. I'm joined with co-host Mike James. How you doing, H Mike? Hey, Jeff. How you doing, man? I was just in Cleveland last weekend. We were shooting some new Armor of God shows, YouTube videos. Uh, I did a web chat with Bill, and mm -hmm. I spoke to the Medina congregation out there. So just got back on uh, Sunday. I had to drive drive to LAX instead of Ontario Airport just to get a, a little bit of, cheap, of cheaper airfare. Uh, and then mm -hmm. I had to fly all the way to New York and from New York to Cleveland to get to get there. So it was a long uh, journey. <laughs> yeah, I guess a lot longer than when you were uh, in, in D.C. area there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I could just drive over to Cleveland from there by six and a half hours. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, well, I hope things uh, went well there. It's good to have you uh, here here with us. And, uh, uh, and you told me uh, before we come on that you were feeling a little bit under the weather. Yeah, I think I caught something uh, over the weekend. I'm feeling a little weak and uh, achy, mm -hmm. and I had a little scratch in my throat, so maybe I better check one of my daughter's uh, COVID tests and see if uh, I got something, because yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a weird feeling. I really haven't uh, experienced this before. Yeah, yeah. I think for the most part now, because my wife had COVID a few weeks ago and the kids had it, uh, there's really most COVID now is very mild, almost like a like a mild cold for most. Yeah, folks. That, so, yeah it could that, be that. I actually I would prefer now I prefer COVID over the flu or cold because it seems to be at least for me to be a lot less symptoms. So that's just that's just my personal take. No, everybody gotcha. else you know th think that, but that's just my yeah, yeah. personal. Uh, yeah, we're not uh, here to give it. medical <laughs> advice. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't go out there and get it or anything, but yeah. uh. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, good, to, good to see you again. Good to have you there. I'm glad, uh, things, uh, went well at Medina. Uh, Mike's uh, sermon, uh, is available now in the app. If you, uh, want to, uh, watch that sermon, uh, I'm, I'm sure you probably did a, you usually do an armor God about the same topic, I guess. Uh, you know what? I usually do, but this yeah. time I had so much extra material that my sermon is brand new. Maybe I'll do an armor of God on that in the future. Yeah. Okay. Great, great. Yeah. So everybody who, if you missed it, check it out on the uh, CGI Digital Network app. Uh, so, so we're just going to get into it today because uh, we have our, uh, I guess our person who always is in the, they cut the peanut gallery, always adding in the, uh, the, the sly comments while we're, uh, we're going. So there's no comments today. So, cause he's, he's with us live. <laughs> And uh, we are joined with the the one, the only Bill Lucenhide. How you doing, Bill? Hey guys, Jeff, Mike, good to be with you. And hey, uh, uh, it's going to be very hard for me to put these good comments about myself at the same time that I'm speaking. So <laughs> that'll be the that'll be the challenge. But uh, and hello to Blake Silverstein. Great to have him here with us today, as well. Uh, yeah, commenting and all that. I appreciate all the work that he does with CEM. Yeah, and, and it seems uh, like uh, we had a problem with you last time in the audio. We thought we had it fixed, but I don't know if Mike, you hear that? You hear a little bit of little sounds. So we have something's going on with your audio again, which is uh, a little okay, disappointing. Are we? Are we? How how are we doing right now? Are we doing a little better on the feedback? Or it's very staticky for some reason. I don't. I don't. I don't know why. Right. We we tested before the show too. So uh, maybe maybe I'm going to ask you to close your browser and join back again and see if that fixes it, uh, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, but we definitely want a good good connection because I know you have something really 
interesting to talk about today. We want people to, yes. to, to stick, stick, stick it out. Right. I'm going to close this and then uh, get back in. Okay, so go ahead. All right. Please. All right. Appreciate it. While he's doing that, Jeff, uh, I've got a uh, Friday night Bible study this Friday. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, partnering with Cecil Green. Cecil's going to be doing his uh, The Kingdom of God from Genesis to Revelation continuing series. So if anybody wants a link to that, just send me an email. Testing. Right, wonderful. How are we doing now? Good now? Sounds good. All right, good. All right, very good. Again, very excited to be here with you guys. And um, today we're going to have an interesting topic, if you want me to just go ahead and jump in here. Go ahead into it. We, we, we need right. the time. Well, uh, how many of you have ever heard of what's called the dummy books? And uh, they have all these different books dating about since 1991. Uh, mm -hmm. About, uh, let me get a copy here so you can see. Yeah, I was actually, I was looking for a few, I have a few back here, but I think they're at my other library behind me. <laughs> yeah, they kind yeah. of start out with, you know, DOS for dummies, all right? I, I mm -hmm. mocked up a, uh, a cover, here we go, and this is Leaving the Faith for Dummies, okay? A reference uh -huh. guide for all of you, right? And, so uh, the purpose of that the book... Faith. The right. purpose of that book is to help people leave Christianity, or what is it? Well, you know, first of all, I'm saying that it, you're a dummy if you do that, number one, okay? And mm -hmm. um, a little bit of a satirical look that, hey, leaving the faith is you're a dummy, okay? And yeah. um, uh, in my experience now, pushing towards 50 years in the faith, right, mm -hmm. uh, our particular Sabbatarian faith, I've seen all kinds of people leave the faith and for a lot of dumb reasons too. Okay. Right. And, and so I just don't want to, I don't want to pick on people. All right. But I uh, want to go through some of the traps that I have found that will help you leave the faith. Not that I want that, that that's a good thing. Okay. And what are the antidotes to those types of things? So again, we'll call this leaving the faith for dummies. All right. And uh, when I say faith, I didn't mean denomination or particular church or something like that, but just giving up on God completely, right? Or giving up on his 10 commandments, right? So I'm not talking about an incorporated body, but uh, so if I accidentally <laughs> slip and say church, realize what I'm talking about, the context is leaving the faith. And uh, we're warned in 1 Peter 5, verse eight, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion wait, waiting to see whom he may devour. Take, you know, take uh, heed that, hey, he who thinks he stands, you know, you're, you, might, you might fall. So even at 50 years into the faith, right, mm -hmm. know that there's traps that are out there and the adversary will devour without mercy. You know, I've you know. But friends, I've had teachers, ministers, people that I learned at their feet, that I'm still using their information today. There were they were difference in my in my life, who have left the faith, who don't even believe in God anymore. It's incredible. But uh, you know, uh, Matthew 13 talks about the parable of the sower, right? And we don't want to be that seed that's on scorchy ground or you know sun baked mm -hmm. uh, ground in our spiritual life. So based on my experiences, here are some of the constructs of. Um, excuses people use to leave the faith all right and so i know you guys have dealt with that as ministers of the church of god you've dealt with it you've shed mm -hmm. tears over it and uh, input please on this because i want to hear your inputs on this but number one mm -hmm. of leaving the faith for dummies bitterness over past experience mm -hmm. and, and these can be all kinds of scenarios right i'll give you some of the common ones um the failure or the falling of religious leadership mm -hmm. mistreatment by brethren or by the ministry or simply just being ignored or neglected while you're within the uh, fellowship and uh, or immorality amongst mm -hmm. your christian peers not that you're doing immorality but that you yeah. got bummed out because you say this you say hey listen if that's christianity mm -hmm. i don't want to have any part of that Right. If these, if this is what Christianity is, forget it. I'm out of here. I, you know what? I think, 
I think uh, our church, the CGI, went through that. I mean, it's been a long time now. It's been way over 20, almost 25 years where uh, uh, our spokesman who was on our television program had a uh, like some immoral things that were done and were national. And uh, I think a lot of people who saw that, they're like, they got confused. Like, how can someone who is uh, leading a church act in that way? Especially if there's if he's teaching the truth, you know, and that can make, that can, that can cause some... Uh, confusion for folks yeah no no doubt incident that particular incident affected people across all the church of god because mm -hmm. uh, that was the voice i first tuned into way back in 1972 and it was very disillusioning and and the like and it can uh create bitterness for some the um i, I i'll tell you what i have a theory about bad psychology not that i'm a licensed psychology but i think all bad psychology and mental states come from bitterness, anger, hate, and resentment. And it produces paralyzing mental problems that are going to damage you, not just for your mental uh, psyche, but your entire spirituality, okay? Because they're, they're tied together. And bitterness, anger, and resentment, you, you can't go there. Uh, it will uh, not produce good things in your life. And, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, Mike? Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, you've got to distinguish between the people and what the book says. I mean, we're all human. We're all subject to carnality, uh, to, to sin, uh, regardless of who you are, even people in the church. Now, we definitely should be working on that, but you've got to separate out Christianity is what the Bible says, okay? That's Christianity. <laughs> what people are doing who are going to church that's a wholly different matter, and people need mm -hmm. to understand that. Uh, everyone's different. Everyone's got idiosyncrasies and problems and uh, have gone through things that you have not gone through. You can't uh, put yourself – you've got to put yourself in the other person's shoes and, mm -hmm. and know what they've lived in life to become what they've become, and we can't do that. So you got to let, let that go. Well, you know what? You, you, you're hitting on what I, I will call the antidote for this one. And that is forgiveness and mercy. It's a very important part of the Christian walk. Matthew 6 tells us, forgive us our debts, you know, the Lord's Prayer, as we forgive our debtors, right? And um, Mark 11 says, when you're standing there praying, forgive if you have anything against anybody, all right? So you've, you've got to go down that road. Okay? It's not This is not an easy thing, all right? But if you don't, you're going to harbor Bitterness, anger, resentment, and it's going to produce very bad uh, fruit in your life. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And that's interesting because it's in the Lord's Prayer there. Uh, he's given us some general ideas about prayer. You, nothing wrong with reciting it verbatim, but I think that that is a, a continual thing that's going to come up in a human's life is forgiveness and letting go of things because... Uh, we're human, man, and, and it's going to happen over and over. Things are going to come up. Yeah, for sure. I don't know if my picture's buffering there or something. I look like I'm frozen on my screen, but uh, hopefully I'm coming through okay. Uh, right um, now, I'm still I'm getting a little bit of the uh, the weird sound again uh, okay, from your voice. I'm going to lower the input here. I, I don't I don't know what I, don't, I really I, I'm I'm at a loss to know what's what's uh, what's going on. Uh, I'm going to ask you maybe just to try it one more time. Okay, I'm going to go out you. and come back, okay? Yeah, sorry about that. Hey, <laughs> Jeff, we'll, well, yes. while he's doing that, our guest next week is Joe Kovacs. He's the author of Shocked by the Bible 1 and Shocked by the Bible 2. So mm -hmm. he's going to be a real interesting guest. He's a you know noted author and not really part necessarily of the Church of God movement, but he's familiar with it and kind of bumps up against it. Yeah, I, 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 I'm very interested to, uh, to hear the, in next week's program. All right, we're back, Bill. Let me see how you sound. All right, very good. Uh, let's go on to the um, the next part of leaving the faith for the dummies, and I have listed here neglect. And we live in a universe of, of um, entropy. Entropy means that things that are put together or complex tend to become uh, – simpler over time or decay over time you know if you don't keep painting the house or pulling the weeds right i mean they'll grow right over the top of the roof and uh you know i've often see these old jalopies that are out on the road you know old trucks or something 
all rusty and everything like that. And, you know, once upon a time, that was a brand new shiny vehicle with excited buy buyers driving it out of the dealership. It's kind of amazing how maybe over a 10, 15 year period of time, it's a rust bucket. How does that happen? How does this beautiful new car become a, um, a rust bucket? And every murderer, every villain, every creep, Adolf Hitler, they were a beautiful little innocent baby. Yeah. Well, what happens? Mm -hmm. Well, it's neglect. You can't, ne there's maintenance. A lot of life is about maintenance. You got to keep brushing the teeth and, and uh, shaving mm -hmm. and cleaning the house and taking care of things. Well, guess what? Our spiritual lives are the same way. It will not maintain itself. You have to put some effort into this. You have to take some thought into your spiritual life. All right. Otherwise, by just plain out neglect and not uh, feeding it, you know, give us this day our daily bread. Uh, mm -hmm. You're going to be out of the faith. You're going to give mm -hmm. up on God. And uh, a scripture in Hebrews 10 verse 36 says, you need endurance. All right. So after you've done God's will, you can receive what he has promised. So there, there's a process here. It's not just one and done. Hey, I got dunked. I had hands laid on me. Okay, you know, great. I don't have to maintain. I don't have to, to uh, pull the weeds out of my life, right? That, that's a mistake. So laziness and neglect, we have to endure and uh, embrace that. Yeah, hey, Bill, you just uh, really hit something for me with my 14-year-old daughter where uh, she she's a lot different than she was when she was 10. And uh, I'm realizing I've got to devote more time to her, more conversation to her uh, right now, especially. And it that just clicked for me recently uh, that um, you're talking about maintenance. And I, it, I just got it like a light bulb went off. And so when you brought this up, it really uh, it really impacted me because of what's going on in my relationship with my daughter. And, uh, you know, I've got to I've got to be there. I got to be talking. I got to be spending time just getting getting down and, and, and sitting with her, you know. Well, you know, I'll, I'll just say that um, it's a critical age, Mike. Right. I've got three grown <laughs> boys that are almost 40 years old. So I'll just offer some parental advice. It's a, everything bad about yourself. Think about yourself for a minute. It starts when you're about 12, 13 or 14. OK, now I, I've never been a smoker. OK, but almost everybody I know who was a smoker started when they were about 13 or 14. Bad habits. It's a critical age. It really is a critical age. Uh, you know, I used to cuss down at the basketball court with the guys. And, you know, once in a while, it still comes out in me to this day. And so it's a critical time to get your teenagers through that without embracing bad permanent habits and that type of a thing because they're tough to overcome so you're you're on the right track with that mike for sure um Thanks i'll move the along advice. to the uh, next way of well, uh, before, the before, for before you move on before you move on i just wanted to bring in one more thing about neglect is that i think what i've seen at least uh observed in 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 those who have maybe left is they maybe neglect the sabbath day neglect keeping the sabbath day or start bringing in things into the sabbath day that should not be a part of the sabbath day and it just kind of overtakes it and then no longer is the sabbath a, ho a holy day no longer is the sabbath a day for worship it becomes just another day and that can really you know sometimes neglect you towards where now you're you know you're out of it oh yeah without a glass you know listen the, the, the sabbath commandment's an interesting commandment it's the one that says remember okay because that means that why are you reminded to remember because it's easy to forget it can <laughs> seem like every other day right and so mm -hmm. neglect is part of uh, uh part of it is not remembering right? we're not going to remember to mow the lawn right we're not going to remember to keep the sabbath okay so mm -hmm. you have to remember uh so that you don't neglect or have laziness okay and mm -hmm. um uh certainly a good point there jeff no doubt about it yeah, definitely, right. definitely. That, yeah. that resonates so, so, with me. <laughs> yeah. Um, my next point I wanted to hit on is this concept. I've read into this many, many times, uh, and that is this. I, I can be alone. I can be a Christian and be alone. Now, and, and there's some truth to that. I mean, sometimes you're alone because you have to be, okay? You're, you're on a, 
uh, you're on Gilligan's Island and you got an internet, right? <laughs> okay, right? It's, it's I, I, I understand that. So some Christians imagine, though, that even when there's potential felony, that I don't have to go to church. I can just be alone. I don't need these other believers. They're all flakes anyway. I don't need to go to church. You know what? It's just me and God and my guitar. Right? I see my guitar here in the back. Just me and God and my guitar. That's all I need. And, and by the way, I'm not against the idea of a personal relationship with God. You need to have a private personal relationship with God. The God that sees you at all times and there's no secrets from him. But there's more to this than just you and Jesus, all right? It is a community. It is a collective. It is a, a body of Christ. It's not just about you and your salvation, all right? And uh, I got a scripture to kind of give an antidote to this, Hebrews 10, verse 24. And, and notice the context. It says, and let us, us, a collective, not just you, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is. So this is a problem even going way back in the New Testament, people saying I can be alone. But exhorting one another, and so much more so as you see the day approaching. And here's the one thing that getting together helps, and that is it knocks off some of those rough corners that you have. Maybe some of the weirdness that you have. Maybe some of the goofy ideas that you have. And it kind of brings you in more to the center there. You need that by being around other Christians and other believers. So I believe that, and I've seen this, that when you go down this road of being solitary, you're a solitary target. You're not part of the herd of God anymore. Some weirdness will start to develop. You get kind of strange. Even uh, in the world, people that are hermits, they get kind of goofy and kind of crazy. You start talking to themselves and all that. So you're vulnerable. But uh, let me make a little joke about this, if I can, about having church alone. Right? I gave it a shot, okay? Here's, here's how, uh, and Gary, I agree, it doesn't work. And uh, can you imagine having church like this, all right? Opening prayer by Bill Lucenhide. <laughs> Sermonette today, Bill Lucenhide. <laughs> and then afterwards, we'll have announcements with Bill Lucenhide. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, we'll have special music, Bill Lucenhide, <laughs> followed by our sermon, Bill Lucenhide, closing prayer, none other than Bill Lucenhide. Hey, you know what? That sounds pretty boring. <laughs> Hey, hey, Bill. I need more variety than just. I look. I like myself, right? But you go. I need a little more variety than me. All right, I'm, I'm sick Bill. and tired of me. And uh, Drag City, not for me. I need some other voices. I need Mike and Jeff and and uh, Blake and Gary and a few others, right? I need you guys because uh, after a while, talking to myself, not for me. Yeah. Hey, hey, Bill. That's a fantastic point, and you made me think about. When I got married, I got married a little later in my life, and, and I thought I was walking the Christian walk. And uh, after getting married, I realized there are all these deficiencies in my personality that I was not aware of, that my <laughs> wife quickly made me aware of. And, and that only that learning only came from having another person there. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the same thing has happened for me <laughs> when I go to church. You know, you say iron sharpens iron, but also just hearing about the struggles and what's going on with other people and what they've gone through. And then you realize, wow, I, I got it easy right now. There's so much that you gain from that relationship of connection to other people that you don't get when you're by yourself. You're totally unaware of uh, things about yourself that you could work on, you could make better. Uh, you, you only gain from uh, other people. What do they say that, that three make a strong cord or there's a scripture mm -hmm. in the Bible about that and uh, right on with that. I mean, that, that's so true. I, I well, do want to, I, 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 I want to, Bill, I do want to bring something up and, and something that maybe we want to think about is we have a lot of people who watch our services uh, in CGI at least 
who are at home because they don't have anybody to meet with or, or, you know, they're maybe isolated like you out in the middle of nowhere or, or, or whatever. It's really hard for them to meet. Uh, or they may be just elderly and can't get out. So there's a lot of different things that can, to do that. So what can we as a church do to help those folks? And is there any, uh, you know, what, what other things can help to keep that connection? Because I think connection with other people is definitely a very important. Oh, you know, Jeff, I, I certainly didn't want anybody who is in that situation to feel guilt over this, okay? Yeah. If you can, you should. All right. And uh, certainly the miracle of, of the Internet and all that has allowed for greater access to the Internet. But we'll, we'll all agree that if you can do it in person, be with people in person, you should. And uh, it's different than just doing it on the Internet. But certainly uh, I don't want anybody to feel any kind of guilt if you can't. Mm -hmm. But uh, I also wanted to address the idea there's some people who literally show up never early i mean they're one minute late and they they leave the second it says amen on a closing prayer they're out the door <laughs> and uh i hate when people at the baseball game do that mm -hmm. i love yeah. going to the baseball game you know so it's about the fifth inning and then um i mean I, if the, you do the that team to is me, losing yeah they just get up and they split right <laughs> i'm going leave. home right i'm done i got everything out of here i want we're losing right yeah you gotta beat the beat the crowd out <laughs> I mean, what, what if the players thought the same thing, right? It's the fifth inning. Well, we're losing 10 to nothing. And they just walked off the field. You, you can't have that, right? Or or I've even seen people, listen, let's be honest. There are times where the sermon's not that good. It's really dragging. There's people trying to figure out a way to exit stage right, you know, and get out the door. Right? You can't do that. You've got to support your team. You've got to be there, okay, through the thick and the thin. And, and uh, I know my old ball playing days, whether it was basketball or baseball, you got to play all out, even if you're losing uh, by 40 points. You know, it, it's a character thing, and it's, it's support of the team. But uh, the Lord's Prayer says this. Does it say this? Let me. Okay, I'll pose a question. Let's see this. Does it say, "Give me this day my daily bread"? It doesn't say that. It says this. It says, "Give us." our daily bread. So it's communal. It's not just me alone, what I'm getting out of it. It's about us. It's about a team. God is building a team. So again, uh, think in terms of what can you contribute to the team and to support the team, even when things are not going that great, right? But you, you don't, don't come late and leave early. Sometimes that happens, of course, but uh, contribute as much as you can. I wanted to uh, cover this next step. Mm -hmm. This is an important one. This one perhaps is the leading cause of all the different ways I've seen leaving the faith for dummies. And that is just plain good old fashioned vice. And man, it, it, vice covers all kinds of different categories, right? I mean, of course, say hey, there's the big one. There's sex, sex addiction, pornography, uh, uh, you know, every kind of manner of deviance in that direction. But I've seen gambling, drugs and alcohol. That's another one, right? Uh, all manner of closet sins. It could just be getting too interested in collecting precious moment statues. <laughs> and yet you find a whole uh, uh, self-image from just, you know, getting lost into some kind of a hobby. It could be the pursuit of wealth. Nothing wrong with uh pursuing success in the world and all that. But I mean, it can become so important to you that what's get church is getting in the way. Being in a faith is getting in the way. The Sabbath thing is getting in the way. Tithing is getting in the way. I, I'm done with that. So uh, I have greater interest. And in fact, if you look at all these things, they're really a form of idolatry. They're, you're breaking the first commandment. You're having something else that is more important than God, or it's something that you're finding relief. For, uh, it's a go-to for you to um, sustain, a false sustainer, uh, rather than looking to the true life source, the true vine, which is Jesus Christ, okay? So really an important step here is examine yourself about uh, these uh, vices, vice. And again, a lot of people leave the faith when they do get involved with vice because they feel guilty. I, I, I just... I'm doing these things. I don't want to go to church because I don't want to be reminded about the guilt that I'm carrying with this. 
And, you know, listen, again, I'm not trying to hammer on people, but the Bible's pretty strict on some of these things. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9 says this, Know you not that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators. That's kind of the forgotten sin in this day and age, right? It's fornication, but it's there. Nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, or the covetous. We live in a whole society that... Um, advocates covetousness all the time, every advertisement you ever see. Drunkards, revilers, extortioners, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Boy, this is serious stuff. Let us always be examining then ourselves, make sure that we're not in those categories. And if you've touched them, if you're there, hey, there's hope. And the remedy is the power of Jesus Christ through the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And let me read that scripture, Galatians 5, verse 22, because this is the antidote. And again, we don't want to leave the faith. We want to have the antidote if we're on the wrong track. And that is this. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, self-control. There is no law against such things. So if you're entangled, and I'm sure somebody out here is listening today is entangled, I don't want you to be afraid. I don't want you to give up hope. I want you to use the power of repentance and confession and the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. And don't be afraid to ask for help. Yeah. Seek your elders and ministers. Look for Mike. Look for Jeff. Whoever it is that's your life, a strong member, okay, <clears throat> that, can, will, that have care and will be discreet in helping and guide you. And remember this. They're human, too. They've been through it, and, uh, you know, double-braided knot is hard to break. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Yeah, yeah, right on. Uh, you know, I've had people come to me with, with issues, and again, uh, I'm, I'm here to listen because uh, everybody goes through something at some time, and what you'll find with these examples that you've given here, all of them in some way alter the brain chemistry that gets you wanting more, wanting more, because you're altering your brain chemistry. But here's the thing. You can stop it. There are techniques. There are ways. Again, repentance, getting the Holy Spirit, and a lot of things in the Bible. But again, the longer you're away or you stop these practices, the easier and easier it becomes for the brain chemistry to settle down and get back in sync. Well, you know, I think I think it's important when you do get entangled with things to remove every support element that's there. Okay, listen, if you got a problem smoking cigarettes, right? Don't keep a pack around the house. Right? People do that, or if you, you know, well, I just got that emergency bottle. I, I'm not going to be drinking anymore, but I've got that bottle hidden down there in the basement just in case I, I fall off the wagon and all that. And, and an important thing, though, too, especially on some of these really serious things, even things like gambling or sex addictions or different things like that, seek professional help or seek an association. They now have uh, Alcoholics Anonymous type of groups for almost every type of, of vice issue that's out there and 12-step um, programs for these different types of things. So get involved with that as well, all right? Uh, certain ministry can help, but... You're dealing with people that have been there, that have overcome things, that have created some accountability and all that, but we just can't stay there. The one thing I've seen about vice is that, of any type in your life, is that it just doesn't fulfill. And you're going to need more and more and more. And you will feel guilt the morning after, the night before, if you will. And then you, you go back to this bad go-to to try to even forget what you've done, right? And it just becomes a vicious circle and you will need more and more of it. It will never satisfy. And in fact, all of these things will lead you to death. The cure for drugs and alcohol, it's either you're gonna reform or you're gonna end up dead because you will increase the dosage that you need and you will lose everything in your life, all right? So it's just, these are not things to sustain. They just don't. Don't yeah, try to convince yourself that they do. They don't. They're killing you. They're enemies. 
And so work hard on this. And again, I, I don't, I say this in love. I'm not condemning anybody here. I don't want anybody to just tune out this. Hey, there's hope. You're in the image of God and you are redeemable. Okay. And uh, seek, seek this so that you can become all that you can be. You're in the image of God with the potential of being a, a child of God and, and a king and queen in, the, in all eternity. So go forth. Don't, don't use this to leave the faith. Uh, one thing I noticed, Bill, is a common uh, pitfall for people who leave the faith is that they, uh, with a, when it comes to vices, that sometimes they will find a way to justify their vice through the Bible. In other words, if someone like has like homosexual feelings, they will go into the Bible and say, "You know what? I don't. Th I think we we're wrong about that. The Bible says this is okay," and they will they will create a theology to justify that sin. You know, whether it's that or drug use or other things, I've seen I've seen it happen where people will kind of gradually try to use the Bible to justify why they're uh, why they have these problems. You know, that that is okay because of this new understanding that they have of Scripture that no one else seems to have. Yeah, yeah, Jeff. There was a senator or congressman about a week or two ago who got in front of uh, you know the body. And uh, he said, I want to give you everything that Jesus said about homosexuality. And he stood there and he didn't say anything. But, mm -hmm. but that's not exactly true because Jesus, yeah. Jesus, God gave the law to Moses and uh, that's all in the Old Testament. So, again, they're playing yeah. on the fact that not everybody knows their Bible and understands that. And, uh, you know, that's one example of what you're getting at there. It's just, this is a way of like justifying sin through theology. And I see that more and more. I see it even in Church of God. So I think that's a dangerous, dangerous uh, way that could lead us, possibly lead us astray if we start justifying our sins through our theology. Right. Yeah. Actually, that's a, that's a, that's a good parlay onto my point five on leaving a faith for dummies. And that is this fringe doctrine or doctrinal understanding. And conspiracy theory junkies, all right? I've seen so many. You've addressed this on the show. I've seen so many varieties of this. It's amazing, right? It's just absolutely incredible. And what happens is people come up with some kind of idea or a doctrine. And if everyone else doesn't get on board with this, then their pride gets hurt. And then they leave the church or they even leave the faith, all right? I mean, again, just to touch quickly on some of the crazy things I've seen, you know, did Adam have a belly button? All right. Uh, <laughs> I was in a congregation up in Northern California. It was a farming community years ago. And they actually, they actually divided in the congregation over artichokes. And artichokes. it had several artichoke farmers in the congregation. <laughs> oh, wait, and artichokes. somebody <laughs> came up with the idea that artichokes are a thistle. And oh, actually what? they are. They're a thistle. They're oh, a thistle. Part of the thistle family. And so, therefore, <laughs> since thistles were a curse on mankind, artichokes were unclean food. Hmm. And so, literally, you know how at a wedding you, you got the bride side and the groom side? And the congregation was sitting in the pro-artichoke, anti-artichoke thing. Now, I, I, was, I was biased because it was a bit of a drive to go to church there. And uh, they used to have these uh, Mexican gals that would harvest artichokes and they would fry them up and batter them and sell them in bags on the side of the road. And I love getting a bag of artichokes, fried artichokes, and eating them on the way to church. So you can, you know what side I was on, right? But boy, this con it was ready to go to fisticuffs over artichokes. Wow. I, I, don't laugh. It, it was very serious, right? So I had a guy that was going around passing out leaflets about FEMA camps. There's these, they're going to put us in in white cattle cars, uh, box cars, transport us to detention centers and all these things. He had little maps for these places. And, mm -hmm. and anyway, I went to all the locations, by the way, my wife yeah. and I took a drive, <laughs> and spent a couple of days. And, you know, mm -hmm. by the way, there were white box cars. I actually contacted the railroad. Somebody mm -hmm. who works for the railroads dispatcher. He goes, yeah, yeah we had these white box cars. Those are old train cars that we use to haul. <laughs> Railroad equipment, you know, for when we do repairs. All right. Yeah. And uh, anyway, I went to these different quote unquote FEMA facilities 
One of them was a Caltrans location that had rock salt and some bulldozers. Anyway, a lot of stuff is nonsense. Yeah. And uh, he got really ticked off at me when I came up with the evidence. He was like, I got it right off the internet. Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, I went there. I went, I talked to the railroad. Okay. This is not happening. And, yeah. um, yeah. Uh, he, yeah here's what I'll concede to about conspiracy theories. All right. It's Satan's world. It is Satan's world. We don't mm -hmm. need to know the details. Is there some kind of, is the council of foreign relations getting together and they plotting this or plotting that? And we got to get down, you know, Mike used to work with CIA. You know, there's all this stuff <laughs> that goes on. And listen, we don't need to know about it that much. We need to be aware that it's not God's world. Do we need to know all the intimate details of what's going on with this and who's bribing who and what corruption is going on here or there or conspiring and all that? I'll mm -hmm. tell you this much. This world is working against us. That's all you need to know. Mm -hmm. How much can you control? By knowing more about it, is that going to further you to the kingdom of God? I will. You know, knowing more news, right? I, I will tell you, I don't think it's furthering you beyond just a cursory knowledge of getting you to the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. One one disadvantage of that, Bill, is it takes away from you working on yourself and creating that fruit of the spirit inside of you mm -hmm. and projecting that out to the world. You should be you should be spending more time on that than doing research on the mm -hmm. internet because half the stuff you're gonna read on the internet is dubious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know what? The conspiracy theories, and this is, and I, I, I'm glad you mentioned it. And maybe we should do a whole program on conspiracy theories. In that there are conspiracies, right? We, I can see in the news, I can read where people are arrested for having a conspiracy to do this or that. So yeah, people do have conspiracies, but most of the conspiracy theories, especially with church about the FEMA camp, someone told me one time they were getting the WalMarts ready for this, and they had all this. And I, I told that person, I said, I said, come back to me in a couple of years. We'll see if you're correct. And that's what I always say with someone in church. It's like, all right, you believe this. You know, here's the evidence we have that shows what you're saying isn't true. Let's let's see in a couple of years who's correct. And I don't think I've anybody who's ever given one of those wild conspiracy theories, they have never, they have never been correct about those things because they're lies. And as and 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 dwelling on lies will mess up your brain as much as uh, a vice. And you should stay away from that. You should dwell on God's truth and not get sucked into the lies that are the, the, the internet. There's so much out there. It, it can become like a drug also in the sense yeah. that uh, you're, you're, you're seeking something and it's giving you a high in a sense. That's why some of these people get into that because they're getting something from it, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it could be I entertaining. I almost call it kind of a Gnosticism in a weird way, in a very weird way. I've got the knowledge. I've got the inside knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't. And uh, Or the, that if we just know about this more, it, that'll be our salvation, right? Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not. Again, yeah. now, I'm not trying to say that you're ignorant of the world or what's going on with news events and all of this. But again, you, you've got to remember, we don't control that much. I don't like what's going on in the Ukraine. I don't. I have no control over it. Yeah. I've got to give that up to God. Mm -hmm. And I am concerned and I do care. But again, being uh, I'm the expert, I've got the insider knowledge. and all that. I don't know what the, how that helps you. I really don't. And so, mm -hmm. um, actually, this kind of parlays into my next point about leaving the faith for dummies, and that is point six, the cares of this world. And that could be the boats and the cars and the job looking good. Boy, we spend a lot of time looking good. I tried to, I tried to put a little powder on my face so I don't look like 65, and I, I, it didn't work that good. But money, power, your position and title in life, your position and title in the church even, right? People get hung up on that. And if Satan can't deceive you doctrinally, then he will try to distract you and waste your time. And Ecclesiastes talks a lot about the vanity of this life. It's a vapor. And it's soon to be gone like dust in the wind, okay? But... We live in a society that constantly tries to make you feel uncomfortable about yourself. That's how they sell you things. All right, that by uh, controls based on creating need, 
Okay, so you you need this wrinkle cream. You need this hair dye. You need this. You need that. You need this car. Cars are seldom sold based upon their mechanical specifications. It's a, a gal driving a Mercedes Benz with, with that's a convertible in a mountain, this beautiful mountain pass. Hey, you know what? Listen, I could be in a Mercedes Benz driving on the Angeles Crest Highway mm-hmm. and making the curves. Up. It's not going to make me look any better, okay? It's oh, going to be old Bill. So again, I saw, the I saw something. The I, hey, Bill, Bill, lies. Bill, I saw something the other day that about cars. We were driving in Atlanta, and someone had an SUV, but it was a Lamborghini SUV. And I, and, and I tell you, it was the ugliest car I've ever seen. But, and I was like, I was like, well, what is a Lamborghini, like little SUV for the kids and stuff? What does that cost? It was I've like, it was like, a, seen that. it was a quarter of a million dollars. It was a, it's like, it was just, wow. it's just like, it's just I, like, I, I, you know, you can get a, a Toyota for like 10 times, you know, 10, 10 times less than, than that doing the same thing. So there's definitely a lot of vanity involved in, in, in the world and the, the things that are out there. Well, let's give the antidote. We'll give an antidote yeah. here to this, yeah. okay? And, and I think all of us have done. You know, I, I made a mistake. I bought a, in 1982, they came out with the new Mustangs. Mustangs were kind of ugly in the 70s. I bought a brand new Mustang. And I brought it to church. And, aha, man, everybody's going to want to look at my black with the red racing stripe and the whole thing. And I realized it just made people hate me. <laughs> and uh, what am I going to do the next week? Hey, come out and look at my car again. The next week, come look at my car again. All right, and I discovered that actually... You know, people were envious and they were mad. And it's like, uh, it didn't really give me the high that I was looking for. So I've been much more practical. Uh, that was about 40 years ago. Much more practical since then. But Revelation 3, verse 18. I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire that you may be rich. That's how you be rich. With white raiment. With, that means righteousness. And you may be clothed. And that the shame of your nakedness does not appear. Anoint your eyes with eyesight, eye salve, so that you may see. So don't let the cares of this life distract you from the faith, okay? It's real easy. And we live in a society more marketed to than uh, any society. I don't care if you're living in, in uh, the Congo or in India or anywhere. It is around the world, and uh, we can be vulnerable in the faith. Be, be aware of the manipulation that's going around to uh, try to seek you to find, have you seek an answer to life through some kind of materialism, okay? It's, it won't work. It won't work. You know, I, you know, I also see people who they spend their whole life uh, devoted to like a uh, fantasy like Star Trek or Star Wars or Marvel, and they go dress up and they, they have their houses decorated and they have their whole life around what or, you know, Dungeons and Dragons or... Tolkien or whatever it is, people will get so so into this this fictional thing that I mean it's okay to like fictional things, but not to you know put your whole uh, your whole like like a religion. It shouldn't become a religion to you, I don't think. And I think for a lot of people yeah. in our world, uh, those those different uh, niche uh, social things have become you know religious type uh, endeavors. You know, uh, uh, just recently last month. Uh, my son had me out in Michigan, and they have a little boy about pushing five. And they took me to a thing called Comic Con, okay? I've never been to a Comic Con. It's not really my thing, per se. I like the old Star Treks a little bit. Don't get me wrong. But I went there. There were 30,000 people there <laughs> living a fantasy life in costumes of all sorts. I mean, Star Trek, Star Wars, comic book characters, and the whole thing. And it was kind of a part of my language it was pretty trippy i thought it was yeah. kind of weird yeah. people are so serious about it they become the character it's a it's it's a form of of escape uh, again uh, uh uh fantasy all right that i'm not really me you know driving the garbage truck or going to work or answering the phone or working at walmart this this is the real me is spider-man right <laughs> yeah and, and again uh hey uh uh, don't get lost in that kind of thing. Again, I'm not against somebody watching us old no. Star Trek or something like that, or reading a comic book and all that. But just remember, that it's just a diversion. Life is not about our diversions. The scripture says, I believe it's in the um, Proverbs, that the, the righteous man recreates to strengthen himself for the job ahead. So in other words, okay, 
So you, you have a little bit of fun. You play a little bit of softball or whatever you're doing, right, for the job that's ahead. Mm-hmm. And uh, I see we are moving towards uh, the end of our show, so I, I want to cover this last point because it's very important, very, very mm-hmm. important All right. uh, points. Well, I got two more p- quick points. But it's bad association. Bad association can have you leave the faith. All right. And I'm going to give you, we'll call it Bill's axiom. Okay. And I guarantee you this is true. And I want you to think on this, everyone listening. The person that you're going to be five years from today will be 100% based upon this. The five people you are spending the most amount of time with and what you are reading. I guarantee you that's who you're going to be. The five people you're hanging around with the most and what you are reading, okay, that is who you're going to be. So look around at that. If you're hanging around with druggies, you're hanging around with people that are cheating on their spouse or whatever it is, all right, gambling, bad behavior of that type, and you can find those people at church. I've noticed that through the, through the years, people hunt around. They're looking for other weak people in the faith to, so they can hang around and be codependent with each other, right? And keep their secret together. You don't want that. You've got to cut that off, all right? And, or if you're reading goofy stuff, what are you reading things that are quality and beyond just the Bible? Of course, you should be reading the Bible. But are you reading things that are positive and uplifting, things for self-improvement, things to help you in your life and so forth, things that are uh, historical so you can learn about uh, history and, and uh, uh, lessons for the future? That's right. Blake says, birds of feather flock together, and they do. So who are you flocking with? (laughs) Make sure you're hanging around with the right people. And Mm -hmm. and, uh, we talk about not being alone, but I'll tell you what. You are better off alone than hanging around with people that are toxic to your success. Mm -hmm. You've got to really monitor that carefully. Now, look, Jesus ate with the sinners. I get that. But Mm -hmm. he was the strong one. Generally speaking, though, a lot of our human nature is we will drag down to the lowest common denominator based on mm-hmm. association. So watch that very, very carefully. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll give you an antidote to this in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 14. It says this, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That means association. For mm-hmm. what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? Okay, we've got to remember that and analyze who are you hanging around with and socializing with and also what are you reading? Because reading is a form of association too. It really is. So uh, watch that. That is definitely a pathway for leaving the faith for dummies. Yeah, great points there, uh, Bill. Uh, Again, thinking back to the teenagers, uh, peer pressure. I mean, it's, it's what you're talking about there. Uh, when you associate with people who are going in a certain direction, there's pressure to be part of the crowd, to be with them. And, and that can happen as an adult also. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, Jeff, you have a comment? No, go ahead. I'm, I'm, oh, we're okay. getting towards the end, so let's, let's go to the next one. And then my last point here, yeah. and this is going to seem strange. Take this the right way. I'm a law keeper. I believe in keeping God's law. All right. So that will be my disclaimer up front. But I want to address legalism and not understanding the grace of God. Mm. And yes, I've seen this even have people leaving the faith because of legalism. And my wife, Terry, in her younger days, I'll give you an example, had a minister who baptized her. He was a great Bible teacher, a very comprehensive teacher. He was a good minister, loved the brethren. And he ended up leaving the faith. You say, why? Well, when both he and his wife were asked about this, they said, you know, by because we we are law-keeping people in our particular denominations, right? They said that they never felt clean. We were always in a state of sin. We we couldn't live up to the perfectionism and the legalism of, of the requirements of the law, right? And you know what? They were right. They didn't live up to it. That's the point. Jeff, you don't, and Mike, you don't, I don't, right? And so Mm -hmm. what was their answer to the problem? They said, well, listen, I know. If we just get rid of that law of God, okay, in my life, then I don't have to feel dirty and guilty anymore. 
right? Mm -hmm. I'm just, I just have the grace of God and there's no requirement of me. Okay. I'll, I'll be an antinomian. And then now I don't have to feel guilty anymore. Well, that was the wrong answer. All right. Now look, grace is indeed free. It really, is. no man earns it. We can't earn it with all the law keeping for a zillion years. We're all guilty sinners every single day. And God freely forgives you and offers his grace on you. And there's no need to feel long-term guilt or regret over your uncleanliness, right? Mm -hmm. I know some people, that they, they carry that burden with them. They won't let God forgive them. God has taken their sins and removed as far as the east is from the west. But again, some would call this what I'm saying is cheap grace. And that's not true. That's, it's a lie. Mm -hmm. It's paid for. And it's not cheap. Our no. grace is paid for by the sacrifice of the living God, of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. And that's priceless. That's without measure. Okay? So it's not cheap grace. But again, you've got to remember that there's grace and that you're forgiven because if you're carrying around this bucket load of guilt all the time, it will crush you. You are not able to redeem yourself and carry that guilt. And can, you can't, you're not, salvation is not found within you. It is found in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. If you try to go down that road, we'll call it legalism, Pharisaism, whatever it is, you will become frustrated and give up because that does not work. Let it go. Let God. You know, <laughs> you've got his Holy Spirit. You, mm -hmm. you see the promises in the Bible. It tells you right there what's happened. It's let he's let it go. He's let you've got to believe that it's gone. It's gone. Keep going forward. Don't stop and go back. You know, Sacho mm -hmm. Page said, uh, hey, I don't want to look back because something's gaining on me. You know, you got to keep <laughs> moving forward, you know. Well, yeah. and, and you can't define yourself, your self-image by who you were. Okay. Some mm -hmm. people try to hang on to that, right? I used to be a gangbanger, right? You know, I killed a lot of guys <laughs> in the war. Okay. Hey, you know what? That's not who you are now. Let that go. Don't, mm -hmm. again, if you hang on to these things, it become your definition of who you are. We are a new creation and a new person uh, with the uh, armor of God, if you will, right? And um, uh, let that go and have the right self-image. And I see we're, we're working to the top of the hour here. Uh, I'll just give a concluding comment. Yeah, before we go there, I want to mention about legalism. Okay, Jeff. Oh, yeah, just, uh, just a little bit about legalism. I think that is a real problem that can really, can really turn people against God. Because the there and there are people in the Church of God who practice a form of legalism. Uh, maybe not. I don't think CGI is anywhere to add or some other. But there's some churches where they feel guilty if they don't, you know, tithe to the exact dime or they don't uh, do all these 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 things. These things. If they don't do it, they're not going to be saved because they're not doing these things. And they, and and you're never going to be able to do all those things. You know? Right. And, and so the, the 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 idea is that we are saved by grace, and we have to look at it and think about it this way, maybe teach it this way. That our response to the salvation of Christ is obedience to Christ. It is a changed life through letting Christ exactly. change us. So this this is this is the way we we view those things. And again, if you get to where you have these guys, and and there's some bad leaders. Uh, in the churches of God, there's one I, I listened to the other day who's who's leading one church right now. I won't mention, but is leading them really badly in some of the things he was doing. He was it was a sermon he gave, which was all about making people feel guilty by not giving every single thing they have to the church. And I was like, wow, this is this is crazy. But he it must have worked because they got all types of money and were able to build all this stuff from this very small amount of people, you know, very small church. And they, uh, you know, the guy just took them for everything. And I, I hate to see that. And I hate that what's going to happen though, when you have a church like that, when somebody who's, who's getting people guilty about stuff and they realize they were taken, <laughs> they were taken, then they're going to, they may leave because they were under that false assumption that this was salvation, which in, it was no way it was. If again, we have Christian duty. All right. Again, balancing yeah. this out, there's Christian duty and there's, there's, Christian effort, all right? But you, if you count on yourself to save yourself, you're going to end up like Peter did when he tried to walk on water, which he did for actually a couple steps, right? You will fail yourself. And what will happen is when you fail that way, you'll just, you'll give up. You are not the salvation, all right? So you've got to look towards where there is the salvation. Again, with Christian duty, law and grace, all right? 
but uh, again, I've seen this, and so I, I wanted to bring that up. Yeah. And um, I'll, I'll kind of give some concluding comments here, if you will, Jeff. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. The, um, you know, Esau, it's a great story, the story of Esau. And if you remember the story of Esau, he traded his birthright for a bowl of soup. <laughs> I hope it was a good bowl of soup. It better be pretty good. But a bowl of soup, Esau traded his birthright away. Judas, he was a dummy. Esau was a dummy. Judas was a dummy. He traded his birthright for 30 pieces of silver. It's about $600 in today's money. $600 for eternal life, for, for a, a place of a, a throne with Jesus Christ. Right? And what does God have in store for you? I'll tell you what. It's nothing less than pure and stupendous joy, fulfilling work and honor and the ability to, to serve uh, Jesus Christ and his plan, right? It's, it is just unbelievable. Never diminish that in your mind. Interesting and productive work forever. So there's nothing worth leaving the faith over. Don't be a dummy. Keep your hand on that plow. Don't look back. Don't be a dummy and don't leave the faith. Sounds good, Bill. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, I really like the the various points you made today. Definitely apropos. Mm -hmm. I want to read uh, Blake's uh, comment here. He says, sometimes it's hard to see someone else struggling too. Someone told me recently that we have to trust the Holy Spirit and others too. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, again, I think everybody who was who's commented today, uh, who's participated, I thank you again, Bill, for joining us. Uh, how, how's the weather out there? I knew last time I heard it was, it was like flooding in that area. Is, is things getting better? <laughs> we, we, uh, we had a microburst, believe it or not, the biggest microburst event ever happened in the United States happened about five miles from my house in the 1980s. Uh, well, we had a, it's like hurricane force thing. We had one here on Sabbath. It was unbelievable. It rained like 10 inches in, in, in 10 minutes. It was incredible. Wow. And uh, so everything was like a river everywhere. Now, we didn't have any flooding here, but it did kind of wipe out some of our landscaping a little bit. So we've been working on that. But uh, we're doing okay. The low-lying areas in Montana have had some flooding and all that. Uh, California has a drought. Uh, we got plenty of water for you, you know, if you can figure out how to get it there. <laughs> yeah, you can water we need it. We but need uh, it. it's, been, it's been an interesting time. There's been changes in the weather around the world. There's no doubt about it. I wonder mm -hmm. if, if uh, we've drawn curse on ourselves. I don't want to sound superstitious, but uh, there are things going on right now that are thousand year events. And uh, uh, we've had a very elongated, cool spring here in Montana. And it, whereas in Southern California and a lot of California, it's just been remarkably hot. So it's, it's been in very, very interesting times uh, here in Montana and around the country and around the world okay mm -hmm. so something's going on i'm not going to call this man-made global warming i think that might be a bit of a leap but um i don't see any kind of repentance in people wondering on these questions you know there's some strange phenomena going on there's a lot of violence going on in the world mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. umpires and referees getting beat up and <laughs> and, and uh, uh people getting little fender benders and they're pulling guns on each other and uh, violence with the guns and all that. It, they're, these are warnings. They're, they're, hey, this morning, this board. morning, this morning, Bill, somebody like on the side of the road was like yelling at our car, waving a hammer at us, really angry. And I, was, I was like, what is wrong with the guy? It was, it was, so there's, 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 you're right. There's some weird things going on out there. <laughs> well, you know, the, um, uh, again, as, we're talking about leaving the faith. We can't get caught up in these things. Be very careful yeah. about this. Mm -hmm. Our, we need to gird up our loins now that we will not react mm -hmm. to people because we're going to encounter this more and more. Yeah. Of rudeness of people being over the top of mental illness and even demonic uh, mm -hmm. motivations that we don't react to it. Okay. And that we rely on, again on, on the spirit of God within us and on our faith. And that the answer is not a carnal answer. I, can, I see this more and more in everything when, you know, the referee calls a foul and next thing you got parents and kids beating up the referee, uh, fender benders, etc. We don't know when we're going to encounter it, but I do say this. Gird up your loins, prepare in advance, and think on this, that we do not act like the world in reaction. Mm -hmm. These are 
no matter what happens to mm -hmm. us, we have to remember everyone is made in the image of God and has potential mm -hmm. for that. Oh, and yeah. we need to treat it with respect, everyone, even the obnoxious. Yep. I won't deny there's obnoxious <laughs> people out there. Yeah. But we're to be different and to be a light. And mm -hmm. so uh, be spiritually yeah. strong. We've got to be strong these days for a lot. Yeah, of you're, I mean, even with the world the way it is, we just got to keep on keeping on with what we're doing and, and yeah, not let it affect us. So that is definitely good advice, Bill. Uh, do you have any uh, final comments, Mike or Bill, before we go? I just, just agree with everything that was said today. And uh, again, you've got to uh, let, let your light shine. You've got to be focused on what you need to do as a Christian and, and just don't let the world in to your specific life. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Again, everybody who uh, commented online, who joined us in the comments, still send your uh, your, your questions and comments uh, to uh, jeff at cgi.org or uh, your questions, comments, and complaints to mhjames6043 at yahoo.com. And we definitely look forward to uh, everyone out there uh, joining us next week as well. And we uh, definitely, I think we have a interesting guest uh, next week that we, uh, a little bit different than we've had so we're, we're you know it's going to be, be pretty interesting and hopefully bill will get on the comments and make some wise cracks and we'll be <laughs> looking forward to those <laughs> well thank you again bill for joining us well thank you guys and thank you to everybody who's, who has listened and all the people who comment and all that my pleasure in being with you all all right goodbye bye now bye